Hello friends, welcome. Friends, today morning, I saw this article, Geo breaks ranks with peers over 6 gigahertz waves for Wi-Fi. Now friends, I am finding this pretty amusing. Because if you recall, I did a video just, uh, you know, two days back. And this title of the video was 6G Wi-Fi, the battle begins, power limits, national interest and stakeholders hidden agenda. Now, I already have explained in this video all that most of what has been discussed in this article. But I have explained more because this article actually talks much less because it is not possible for anybody to describe everything in a reporting story. I do understand that. So if you look at my video, which I did earlier and go through the video again, you will understand the nuances of this lobbying work that is going on. So what I plan to do, friends, in this video is to refresh some of the things which I have already done, map those with this article. And since now everything is in public domain, I will like to point out what a particular stakeholder is intending to do, what is, is, is rational and what kind of contradictions that we see on the stands then the narrative that the various stakeholders have taken earlier. And we will also talk about that what could be the, uh, you know, strategy that DOT can adopt to move this forward step by step. Because this lobbying from various stakeholders will continue to happen because everybody has got their own business interest to protect. Nobody is, 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 is worried about the larger holistic benefit that each and every stakeholder will get because if somebody is getting some benefit it may be possible that some other players may lose in the process right so we will talk about each and everything and try to make the discussion much more sharper clearer for a common layman to understand because these are very technical issues so let's first go and refresh the whole thing again and for that, I am going to use the slide deck, which I have used earlier. So what is this all about? Wi-Fi. It is all about Wi-Fi. It is all about D-license spectrum, right? Now, before I go and explain to you Wi-Fi and D-license spectrum, it is important to understand that why D-license spectrum and Wi-Fi is different from license spectrum. Just an overview. And why this battle of power is going on with Wi-Fi spectrum and there is no question of any power battle we see in license spectrum. Now the fundamental difference between a license spectrum and a de-license spectrum is that when a license spectrum is assigned, it is assigned in an exclusive fashion to the players who participate in an auction and therefore just you know some regulatory within some regulatory contours like to prevent spillover of power in adjacent spectrum bands which will belong to their competitors, they are fully capable of transmitting at full power. There is no power limitation in license spectrum. Whereas in case of unlicensed spectrum, because this is going to be an uncoordinated use, there are no license services here. So what happens is that the only way to enable those services, which can operate in an uncoordinated fashion, the DOT and the government of India will come out with some power limitation. Because if you transmit at very high power in a spectrum band, which is de-licensed, what happens is that there will be chances of interference with other stakeholders who are trying to use a similar service, maybe near to your home or near to your router. So there will be huge amount of collusion between different devices, which will start operating in this spectrum band. So to prevent those collusion and interference, the power is limited so that the transmission of signal from the access point, maybe a router, does not travel very far. That is the whole debate about power. Now, some people want the power levels to be low, lower and some people want the power levels to be higher. Why? I have already explained this in my video, but I will just like to talk about this whole thing using this article and you will see the contradiction. First is the headline, Geo breaks ranks with peers over 6 gigahertz. 
Now, before I talk about Geo, Reliance Geo, I would like to basically say that COAI, which is a consortium of all the key uh, telecom uh, service providers, which is Bharti Airtel, Reliance Geo, Vodafone, they have been pushing against delicensing of 6 gigahertz band. They want, didn't want the 6 gigahertz band to be delicensed. They wanted to be auctioned, which means that they wanted to prevent any other player maybe an ISP player or anybody who want to use this for some other purposes, so that to prevent them to use it. And they wanted the whole band to be used in an exclusive fashion for higher power transmission, just like what they are doing in case of 3.5 gigahertz band or the other frequency band in the lower frequency bands for 5G and 4G. Now, when the government decided to break this spectrum band of 12 gigahertz, uh, 1.2 gigahertz, which is 1200 megahertz into two chunk. One is 700, another is the bottom part is 500. The 500 megahertz got delicensed as per the government of India because this is an international practice. If you go to Japan, if you go to Europe, you go to US, some portion of this band has been delicensed to enable new Wi Fi technology, which is not possible to be deployed in only 5 gigahertz band and in 2.4 gigahertz band. So if you look at this, earlier we had two uh, D-licensed band. One is 2.4 gigahertz band, another one is 5 gigahertz band. These are the only two D-licensed band where Wi-Fi is working. So you have to open another band called 6 gigahertz here with 500 megahertz spectrum so that this whole 5 megahertz and 6 gigahertz can be used in an integrated fashion by the newer version of technology called Wi-Fi 7. Because Wi-Fi 7 has got the capability to do integration of blocks here. Two blocks, if they are found, they are, they, if, the tech, if the router finds that there is a block here which is free and there is another block here is a free, then they can add these two blocks together as if that they are logically one. They may be physically separate, but they will be logically one. Therefore, if you have another 500 megahertz block here for 6 gigahertz band, then your Wi-Fi router speed increases for home usage. Home Wi-Fi is going to become more empowering. And then you will have, you will not be in a under constraint of these channel sizes, which are 20 megahertz, 40 megahertz, 80 megahertz of, and 160 megahertz. These channel sizes can be increased to a larger block size because Wi-Fi technology is quite different from licensed technology where the full block of spectrum is used at a time. Here, even if you have a block of 605 megahertz, which you see here, right here in front of your screen, you cannot use the full block at a time because the Wi-Fi technology chooses individual chunks and sees whether that particular chunk is free because it is an uncoordinated use and therefore, it will choose a particular chunk of spectrum. It may find that free in 5 gigahertz and it may find one block in 6 gigahertz and they will add these two blocks together to create an integrated block. And that's why 6 gigahertz delicensing is very, very important. Now, after having given you a preview, what is the real purpose of opening up 6 gigahertz band? Let's talk about the power battle and let's go through this article. Now, Geo, as I told you, was initially against 6 gigahertz band opening up. They wanted that whole band to be for IMT. They didn't want 6 gigahertz to be delicensed. They have their own agenda. But suddenly, Geo has actually taken a completely opposite stance. Now, what is what Geo is trying to do is that, if as per this article, Geo wants the power levels to be increased in 6 gigahertz band. And why? Because Geo has got this UBR technology which they are UBRB, unlicensed band radio. If you know that there are FWAs, fixed wireless access terminals, and FWA has become a hit in India. In order for FWA to expand further, right, and grow exponentially, the end device price of the FWA has to be brought down significantly. Now 5G, the price curve is not going down as much as the Wi-Fi price curve goes down. So if the device price of the end device, which is the terminal, which is located at the rooftop, and then from there, the Cat5 Ethernet cable comes and goes into your home right router, if that device price can be brought down, then the adoption of FWA can become better. Therefore, Geo, though they were doing FWA in 3.5 gigahertz band, which is the 5G band, they also now attempting to do FWA in 
5 gigahertz band which is unlicensed spectrum and now wants to open up another band of 5 megahertz spectrum in 6 gigahertz so that their UBR based FWA will have more capacity. That is the reason why Geo has changed its stand. Earlier, they really didn't want any of the 6 gigahertz band block of spectrum to be opened up. Now, it is pretty strange why Bharti Vodafone is not in alignment with Geo. I have no understanding what is going on with Bharti Airtel and Vodafone because it looks like that they have a different type of agenda compared with Geo. They want more studies to be done before this band can be opened up. But Geo saying that open it up, they are fine with the government, but increase the power level at par with that 5 gigahertz band so that UBR type of technology can be deployed, which they are already maybe using in 5 gigahertz band, which I have been, which I have already spoken in this video because they had made a submission in the stock market where they're saying that their UBR technology is as empowering as their 5G FWA in 3.5 gigahertz band and can do synchronous uplink as well as downlink of 1 Gbps, right? So this is the reason why Geo probably might have changed their stance, right? Which I have already mentioned in my earlier video. Now, Bharti Airtel Vodafone, however, is pushing the government for more deliberation. And that is what has been written here and to form committee to take a final de a decision on spectrum delicensing, which I am also finding it very, very strange. Why? Because there is no need to have any further deliberation. If you, if you want to have deliberation, you can continue to have deliberation forever. There is no problem with that. But you why stop the home Wi-Fi solution? Because Bharti has been selling Wi-Fi solution like crazy. If you go to Bharti's website, their whole strategy of marketing is anchored around Wi-Fi. So why stop Wi-Fi, right? Which is a home, uh, you know, uh, wireless capability to connect your TVs, your laptops, your phones without using a wire. So more empowering the Wi-Fi is within your house, more empowering the operator becomes to deliver more data. So I find this pretty strange why Bharti Airtel doesn't want 60 gigahertz band to be opened up. You open it up with lower power, whatever the government of India has proposed in the notification, which is the one is that low power of 30 dBm for indoor Wi-Fi. Another was very low power for those, uh, you know, wearable devices, which you can wear and go outdoor. And why did they do that? Because they wanted to protect you know, ISRO satellites, which is operating in this particular spectrum band. Because if you empower or if you increase the power to a very high level, then you need to do studies to see whether those satellites will have interference or not. But if you are going to transmit at a very low power indoor, which is 30 dBm, which is called the, the current, which is called low power, which the government of India has, um, you know, proposed in the notification and very low power, which is for outdoor, right? Because the low power is not for outdoor, which is 30 dBm. But there is another power version, which is 17 dBm, which you can wear and go out outdoor, which is a much lower power. And therefore, there is no question of those uh, devices interfering with the satellite. So it is very easily possible that you can do it in stages. Let it let it roll roll over. Let the devices get get uh, you know uh, you know enabled in in uh, for empowering the Wi-Fi within your house. As and when the studies determine that there is no interference, then you can increase the power, because Japan and Europe do do not have any uh, you know high power or standard power. Uh, uh, in the 6 gigahertz band. They also have low power and very low power. They don't have standard power because they also probably are doing deliberation except US, which has got standard power, but they have a lot of constraint. Their transmission of standard power on a particular elevation is, is restricted to a much lower level, which is 23 dBm to prevent the satellite getting interfered. And also they have got a system called automatic frequency coordination which is an automated system to protect the backhaul links. So they have already set up, you know, various controls of regulation, restrictions and rules anchored around a certain, uh, you know, uh, in a framework to prevent, uh, you know, existing operations to get in interfered. Similarly, India can also do the same thing. India can wait for those rules to be framed up after consultation. But why stop Wi-Fi adoption? Open it up. 
for low power and very low power as has been proposed because these are not going to have any interference with ISRO satellites and ISRO will be also fine and then involve ISRO in a deliberation and then do all the studies and then if you find that the satellites are not getting interfered, then you can open it up with higher power. Because these discussions around power can continue to happen for, in, for a later duration of time without restricting or preventing Wi-Fi 7 adoption in the country because this is in the interest of the consumer because as and when, as the, uh, the, uh, the outdoor network of the operators, the backhaul network or the FTTH capability is getting enhanced, improved and new applications are coming, the indoor Wi-Fi is becoming a bottleneck because as... If you don't empower the indoor Wi-Fi capability to a higher level, as I explained to you, then what will happen is that even if you have got very, very high speed, you know, data coming inside your house using an optical fiber of 1 Gbps, 10 Gbps, you can't deliver those data to your, to your devices, computers and your TV and other smartphone devices because Wi-Fi will not carry those speeds because the current Wi-Fi doesn't have the capability, right? So... So if you look at this whole thing, you'll find that Geo initially was against. Everything has been written here. You, you read this article, it's quite ap accurately portrayed the situation on ground. And the power push is mentioned here. Geo now supports delicensing of 6 gigahertz band with higher power, Airtel, VI want more deliberation, tech industry wants higher power, which I find it a little bit confusing because I don't think that every tech industry is going to be interested in blocking it. Why? Because it is in the interest of the tech industry to roll out those Wi-Fi routers rather than basically increasing the power levels and creating a huge confusion which might prevent the rollout of 6 gigahertz band in this country. And these are already have discussed, you know, if you go to my earlier video, this all power density limits and all technical issues I have already discussed. So anybody who is interested in understanding the complete nuances where Apple is and what kind of Bluetooth technology is, you can go and watch my earlier video and you can understand what is going on. So friends, that's all in this video. I'm not going to go further in this video. Just to give you an overview that whatever I did earlier in this video, that has been proven correct. And this has this article clearly proves that the stakeholders are not interested in an alignment and they will continue, they want to continue to fight this issue, which probably is not the right thing to do. We should all collaborate, we can form committees and we can discuss, but we should not prevent the rollout of Wi-Fi 7 in this country, sorry, uh, 6 gigahertz band in this country, because that is going to bring Wi-Fi 7 and that Wi-Fi 7 is going to empower the indoor Wi-Fi capability significantly for it to carry high speed data end to end, which is getting delivered inside your house. Otherwise, that will become a bottleneck, friends. So do that first, go one step forward, and then you can continue to have this debate, you know, till the time there is an alignment and you should have to involve the ISRO people also because their satellites are at stake, right? And therefore, those satellites have to be protected because these are of national interest. Thank you, friends, for your time. I hope that you have understood the situation. I thought of just explaining this article uh, for everybody to uh, have a clear and clear understanding as to what kind, kind, kind of uh, path we can move forward. I hope that, uh, you know, that has got registered uh, using, uh, using this video. I have been able to, I have been able to accomplish that, uh, that objective. And thanks for listening till the end. And I'll come back with a new video on a new topic next time. Thank you very much, friends.